D D D D DJ DJ Double it's DJ Double here, and today my special guest in the building, Eyes. Ah, oh, respect, my brother. You're done now. Thanks for coming down, bro. Oh, thank you for having me. Bit, again. bit of a journey for you from the Midlands down to London. Yeah, man, like yourself as well. Yeah, man, it's about a two and a half hour, so yeah, but it's cool. I appreciate it, man. It's worth it. So Derby's the hometown. Yeah, man. The Midlands is making a lot of noise right now, bro. Crazy There's so noise. much stuff going on. What's yeah. in the water up there that this this creating all this talent? I think. I don't know what it is. I think it's just a little bit more like, I don't know, not behind, but just a little bit more the old kind of like uh, buzz that London used to have kind of thing. You know, like, um, you know, the, the passion kind of feel like, yeah, I think it's like that. Not like London doesn't have it, but it's mm -hmm. the old school style, especially in like grime and stuff like that. Yeah, man. Why do you think it's now that so many people are being discovered and breaking through from the Midlands? Uh, I think it's just like this generation, it's kind of like more of an open mind to... um where people are from to be honest you know what I mean because um, there's loads of big artists to be honest like Misty's from Birmingham he's absolutely massive Lady Leisha JK and that's just Birmingham then there's uh -huh. all other cities that are doing crazy stuff I can't even name all the names that are doing crazy stuff so you know there's so many different people banging on the door with different styles of music as well I think that also wor works and helps as well so you know it's like okay there's so much happening in the Midlands it's not just grime as like maybe 10 years ago it was only just grime in the Midlands there wasn't any like rappers you know getting any shine so I think it's now they can like kind of see that you know there's a lot going on in the Midlands it's going on in London and it's the same kind of level Mm -hmm. And maybe a bit more of a different kind of approach and source because it's a different kind of like, you know, some like um, areas, locations and just different feel to like, I don't know, like the, the council estate streets, however you want to call it, or just areas, you get me? Yeah, man. Do you think Mind the Gap had much to do with it? Uh, I'd hope to say so. I think it did in a bit in the grime sense. I think it's a lot of the artists on that uh, have gone very, very further yeah. from the start of that so yeah man I think that did kind of help in certain ways especially in the crime yeah. crime game yeah. I, I'd agree man I think that did help put, mm. put a few people on definitely When do you remember the first time you heard Grime? I remember my brother showing me something like um, on Channel U like when it first like started about to be honest um, it was like Crazy Titch um, I can see you you can see me that right tune, okay yeah 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 I think that was kind of my first kind of like memory i've got you get me of grime yeah and also like you know the so solid crew days and all that but it was more garage in it so you can't really call it grime but what definitely was grime was the crazy crazy titch stuff so mm -hmm. yeah man what made you want to pick up the mic and get involved my older brother used to rap in it so okay like yeah so i used to come home from school and he was already rapping so that kind of got me into it in it so pick up my brother on that one and also yeah it was just like obviously I was, I'm originally from London, so, like, you know, being from Derby, like, I love Derby, and it is what it is, but I've always, because there's so much going on in London, it's always like, oh, man, I wish I, we stayed there, kind of thing, you know what I mean, when I was younger, especially now, there was, there was artists in London that I was thinking, yo, if I stayed there, I would have been like him, for instance, so I think it was that kind of stuff that got it, like, making me think, yo, I'm, I'm going to be able to do this as well, isn't it, like, because they could do it there. I was from there, so why can't I? And, you know, there was a couple of other artists from Derby that were doing bits, so, like Ruckus and Baby J, but they were like the hip-hop kind of scene, so, yeah, man, all of them kind of people there, I learned from their mistakes and even their gains and just took it on, man. Are you called Eyes because of your first name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. first name shortened slightly, is that yeah, why yeah, it is? Yeah. yeah, it is, yeah. Isaac. Isaac. I don't really tell people, but I've said it now and I've shouted it out. So, Isaac, yeah? Yes. I do make a couple of little stories in that about it, to be honest. I tell people I've had like eye problems and all sorts, but nah, I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> I was lying. It's just my name. <laughs> yeah. So, about eight or nine years ago, you performed yeah. with Bizzle in Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's my hometown, by the way, Brighton. Mm. How was that? You know what? That was actually quite a lot, long, bit longer than that, you know? Yeah, it was yeah, it was about, about eleven years ago. Yeah, about about okay. Yeah, but yeah, maybe even was it more, your 12. first performance? Yeah, that was my first ever performance. Yeah, about twelve years ago. Oh, there was a rapper like called in a, Black in Twang. In at the deep end, right? Yeah, man, in at the in at the deep end. You know what? My little brother brought me to that as well. So my little brother started rapping as well with me, and um, I, like my mum moved back to Brighton, but I was living in with my auntie. So um, when I used to go back to my mum, I used to go check my little brother and he was rapping with some other kids from up there and they used to have mad like performances and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, let me get involved. So yeah, he brought me and then 
it was like the opening for Lethal B and that, and it was mad. So, yeah, man, that was about 12 years ago. So from there to now, it's just a mad journey, to be honest. But um, obviously, it wasn't a serious thing then, innit? It was just, I like music and I want to do it. Yeah. But yeah, man, I learned a lot from just that one performance alone, to be fair. I'm not a football fan, right? So yeah. certain names and certain people are completely lost on me. Oh, that's fine. Um, but one name that's floating around yours is Antonio Conte. Is that yeah. how you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about the connection there, because I understand mm. he's... He, is he Chelsea's manager or their yeah. owner? Uh, Manager. Manager. So he's yeah. still quite a big figure like yeah, a difficult yeah. guy to get to no it's definitely you yeah. had him in a video right yeah i did i did explain i told people different stories so i don't want to tell you the truth D- the truth yeah i'd like the truth that's, right. that's what we deal so with i was here. doing a music video <laughs> with um maniac big producer in the right. game um and uh we was doing it around solan square i think that's how you pronounce it or solan something like that chelsea mm-hmm. area and um you know, I seen a lot of people trying to take pictures of him and uh, I seen him like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm doing my thing. But I didn't clock who it was. And then Maniac was like, mate, I watch football every single day. That's definitely Conte. And I was like, all right, then let me try and ask him for uh, a little clip in the video. But, um, you know, I've, I've seen him saying no to everyone. So instantly everyone was like, no, 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 it's not going to work. But um, I just thought, let me try it. So I just said to him, like, listen, I need to get you in the music video. Like, you know, I'm a massive Chelsea fan. I don't even support Chelsea, by the way. But yeah, I'm a massive Chelsea fan. I need to get you in. I need, yeah, you know, just just that kind of, that little bit of passion showed him. And yeah. he says, you know, I like your passion. Laughed, took the, did the little shot with me. And yeah, it banged and went viral randomly. And um, yeah, I had bare newspapers shouting me from like Italy, you know, crazy places. Because he's Italian, I think. Yeah, and there was loads of like it- Italian papers calling me, The Sun, Daily Mail, crazy, yeah. crazy people, in it? So, um, yeah, it kind of like really, really went viral. And, you know, they, they uploaded it on crazy channels like ESPN and things that no one no one has done in Grime. Like, so, yeah, I don't know how the door opened, but I saw him, I got him in the video and it and it just banged in it. So, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, something, you see, some, yeah, circumstance and just make the most of, the littlest opportunity. Do yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you almost got run over in that video a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was when I was watching it, I had to watch a couple of times more, like Yeah. Whoa. That's this a guy's playing with fault. fire right now. Yeah, the director was like, Listen, we don't want you know, this the, the whole video is basically show no no manners, you know, right. zero manners, no behaviour. Yeah. So like there was a, a little bit of smoking in like a um shop and stuff like that, which was really stupid. I didn't want to do that, but you know, he was on to me. He had to do it. So he had a vision. He had a vision. He said, just walk past the buses. But me, I, you know, when it's work time, I just get straight into it. So I'm um, just take it on and say, okay, if that's what you want me to be, and that's the vision, let me go. So I just, you know, blanked Bro, the everything bus, out. The bus one was close, you know. I if the bus it. driver, I didn't if, he, if, if, he was look, if he'd looked to the right instead of to the left when he was turning, like, you're gone. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you, I'll show you the clip in a minute, bro. Like, yeah, no, 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 you're was, so right. It was a close one, it man. It was very close, it was very close, man. The director would have, I'm sure he would have had the life life insurance all, all, all covered, but um, yeah, you might, man. You'd have got more hits at least. Exactly, man. You have to take those risks to make it look a bit more funnier, innit? You know what I mean? <laughs> What's the difference between Elijah Eyes and Eyes? Oof, no one's ever asked me that, you know? That's crazy. I think Elijah Eyes is more of my hip-hop side, my... um more of emotional you know more of a message that i spread it's kind of like a bit more it's me as a person i think eyes is kind of like me when i'm more in my hyper stage it's a lot what i'm more known for and like you know i think i do do things under the name eyes which is very elijah eyes kind of stuff which is really weird saying that but um yeah i think the eyes is very very hyper more flows more charisma and like a bit more um, I don't know, like party, a bit more like, yeah, let's let's party mm-hmm. and, you know, smile. And I think the other one's a bit, Elijah Eyes is a lot more like, let me listen, oh, that's that's deep. Oh, he's just said that. Oh, that is mad. And and just, just more meaningful, man. I think it's just a lot more, I wouldn't say real because they're both real, but it's just touching things that a lot of people might relate to a lot more. You get me? I don't, I don't really believe in it, but, you know, that Gemini kind of thing that people really say and, you know, it's like two different mindsets and, for me, it kind of is like that, so maybe they're right, maybe they're not. But yeah, I think that's the reason, kind of, of why I've got two names. To be fair, because like there's a lot of people that um only know me for eyes. So when they hear Elijah eyes, they kind of like think, oh, this is a lot more 
there's a lot more about this guy. So I think that's why I sometimes write Elijah Eyes, just because it sounds a lot more professional and it's got another one of my names in there. So, yeah, because Elijah's actually my middle name. So Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're a Gemini, yeah? I am. When's I am, your I am. birthday? June the 4th. No way. Are you June the 4th as well? <laughs> Bang! Hey! Terminated. Oh. We're partying oh. early. That's it. There you oh, go. Say no June more. Wow. Joint party. Sit yes, down. We'll have, all right, we'll talk afterwards. We might do a little... Sick. Little party or you something. You know who else has got our birthday? Who? Avellino. Jeez. He shares our birthday as well, man. What a clever guy. That's sick. That's so mad that you down. said that. In my head, like I that. thought, I'm going to ask him his birthday. Imagine oh. if he says mine. Mad. mad. I can't believe you're June the 4th. We're yeah. in. We're in now, brother. You dropped a record called Fuck the Grime Scene. Was yeah, that record I did. or more of a freestyle? Uh, it was more of a freestyle. I never released it. You know, I didn't really know about releasing anything then. It was just a, uh, yo, Video, let me spit. Yeah, 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 yeah. What compelled you to do that? Well, I was trying to get on Lord of the Mics because at the time I was really up for clashing. It was what I was trying to like get seen in and, you know, kind of like doing the old school grime, grime approach of starting through clashes. So I was, I was, I noticed that Maxstar had sent for Invasion Alert and then they had sent back and then they had said someone else's name and then when they sent back and then he was, he did one and then he mentioned someone else's name and a couple of people started mentioning mine. So I thought, oh, I'm just gonna go for everyone. Cause most people <laughs> just for, for one person and then their friend, yeah. And then I just got really excited and just like went for everyone. And then, um, you know, it went massive. And that's kind of mm. like that was definitely my foot into the game. To be fair, I think a lot of people know me from that. But um, you know, like I would say, ninety five percent of the people I mentioned in it, I've actually become my friends. You get me? We okay. made a friendship, and like, yeah, I think it was good. It was definitely good, and it was. I normally think people that do that are just like, oh, you just sent for everyone to make it, but, and I judge it, and then I forget that, yo, I kind of did the same thing to be fair, but um, I think I already had like a bit of a following, I was already getting like a hundred thousand views and stuff, so mm-hmm. it was kind of like, yeah, I can do it, I'm allowed to do it, and you know, people kind of agreed with it, and it was, it was, it was definitely a vital thing to my career to do that. To be it's fair, part of the sport, man. Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah, definitely, man. You, the, the people you sent for. Yeah. I would say none of them were what I would consider like the grime elite. Yeah. So you didn't go for a JME. You didn't really oh, go no, for Skepto. No, like, no. why did you decide not to? I think like, if I'm here going for them, it's like, okay, it doesn't really make sense because I went for the other people that I don't know. I'm going for people that could easily block my music career. I wouldn't want them to block my music career. Not like some of the people I sent still could block my music career, but with the force I had, their force wasn't much stronger right. to be able to block mine. Whereas, say, if... Sorry to swear, but if I said, like, fuck Jeremy, it's going to be like, boom. Okay. Nobody... If anyone posts eyes, I'm unblocking you. Or eyes at this... Or, in fact, you know, it's all the people in Graham. So, right, yeah, yeah. yo, burn that eyes guy if he comes to slow. You not like that's what they're gonna do. And Jamie was an example. Doubt mm-hmm. that Jamie will be that kind of person for sure. He's such a nice guy. Doubt yeah. he's that kind of guy. I'm just saying, like, that's kind of the reason at the time. Thinking, yo, like, I wouldn't do it for the big guys because they're just gonna easily end you without even rapping. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to get in the game. I'm not trying to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, black, black, <sighs> blacklisted. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I went for it. And um, I think if I not another reason, if I went for the big guys, I think it would kind of get aired by it, innit? Like, they're not going to cut reply back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of made the healthy competition. I think every time someone I mentioned replied back, it made mine more valid. Like, okay, they have replied. That means he is... Absolutely, it, yeah, yeah. You, you know do I mean? something for Skepta and he, and he don't just reply, airs it. Like, then... Oh, air pie guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. Air pie guy. Air pie. Who, who did respond? Who responded good? I'm going to come with. There we go. Who responded well? Some people responded, but what was the point? It was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, we can hot them up as well in a minute. Like, let's, let's, let's rejuvenate this for 2018. All right. All right. I'll, I'll start with a good lad. Lord of the Dubs. I think Manga come with the hardest one back. Manga? I never. I didn't listen to Manga's, but he's Manga's, one of my favourite. Ma- yeah, Manga come back. So. Manga come slap me up because I said in mind that he's light work. And then he come and showed me that he's heavyweight and I can't pick that up. <laughs> yeah, he gone back with that serious. Because you know what? When I was a youth, Mango was one of my favourite. And for yeah. time, I didn't hear him. And I was like, nah, man. That's why I kind of mentioned his name. Cause I kind of wanted him to just rap, to be fair. But mm-hmm. he come back and he 
and he showed me what was what. So I think he was kind of very hard. D Power, you know, he's a big big guy in the gram scene, so it was sick when he come back. To be fair, I think Cadell's one was pretty big because obviously he's Wiley's brother, and it was kind of like making a proper like big two minute part on me, which. It's weird that that's good, but at the time it was promotion and if someone's descending for you, it makes it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. And if good. no one had heard yours, yeah. they might hear, hear his. And be like, yeah. Who's he talking about? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And Axeman. There was a, there's a guy called Axeman. I think he's called Axna. Ax140. Yeah, he he was he was he was a problem. <laughs> I didn't. I had. I I airpied him. Yeah. <laughs> I airpied him for a reason though, man. Because to be honest, I knew like. Yo, what was he that good? Yeah. This was too hard, fam. Oh, I was hiding. You, you, I was hiding. Didn't under, it. I, was, I didn't want Walked it. So straight out the ring. I didn't want it. With, I didn't want it with him. Uh, <laughs> the most thing, the most common thing I see when people are talking about you is how underrated you are and how underrated yeah. they think you are. Yeah, man. Do you feel the same? I do think like there is some in some ways, yeah. But I also think um, you know there's so much to look at and rate at the moment that I can't say I'm underrated because there's like a lot of people that are better than me. You know what I mean? I don't. I mean, I mean better. I mean like putting in more effort and putting in more work and putting in more time and also like just literally like making more better hits. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, it does get frustrating occasionally, but um, yeah, I do think I'm underrated a little bit. Yeah, but um, I think the time's coming that the ratings are coming back. So no doubt, no doubt. It, it won't be feeling like that for too long but I don't like to feel underrated because if you feel like you're underrated too much that's when you start feeling like some sour guy you mm. know and that's definitely not my kind of personality you get me I'm just a loving guy so like for me I think I just make little hurdles here. and once I hit it I just give myself a pat on the back so I like I know I'm underrated but there's certain things that man rate me for in it and at the end of the day I'm from Derby so I was always gonna be underrated until right. a certain day in it. Like yeah, I never yeah, came yeah. in this game thinking everyone's gonna open the door. To be fair, they've opened it a lot for because you know and I know they just think it's a countryside and it's that's fine. I'm, I'm not trying to say it's not that. I'm saying it's, it is a city and it isn't that. But I'm not trying to like like portray it as some bad place. I'm just trying to say like you know a lot of people kind of like look at me and think yo that's dark. Well, I thought a lot of people would look at me and think, nah, he's from Derby, he can't do it. But it's the opposite of that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's actually been working. But obviously, to get to the main spot, there is still that kind of like of a problem. And that's probably the reason. So I don't really get too frustrated about being underrated and that. If a thousand people say I'm underrated, it can't be that underrated. Yeah. Because a thousand rating. people have said it. Yeah. You rate me so much that you think I'm underrated. I rate that. Why is the new mixtape called Square One? Oh man, I'm just getting bare chatty patty. Uh, it's called That's Square One, yeah. Because <laughs> That's what interviews are for, man. Exactly, talk, yeah, yeah. Talk the things. Because a lot of people, as you, as we said, I, I sent for a lot of rappers and I've had a lot of clashes. They thought I was just a grime clasher, like a, just a battle rapper. Or freestyles, as most of my freestyles have got crazy like million views mm-hmm. and crazy views and stuff. So a lot of people think I'm just either a clasher or a freestyler. So I wanted to show people that I can make music. I know people do know I make music, but um, I really wanted to show them that I can make music. And that's another reason for why I've only got one collab on the actual project. So I called it Square One to show people I can make music and I'm an artist. And I'm going to go back to like, you know, the drawing board. I'm still eyes, but like basically this is a whole new blank canvas and, you know, like, just look at it as a whole new eyes to like when I release the first song. Forget I've even ever done a freestyle kind of thing. If you actually listen to it, you can actually hear that um, you know that I've fa- like finally found a sound that kind of like stays the same throughout the um whole project. Whereas before it was all right. I'm showing you I make songs, but I'm showing you I make a reggae song. I'm showing you I make a drill song. I'm showing you I make grime. I'm showing you I make garage. I'm showing you know, and this one's a lot more the same kind of tone I know there's different genres but it's all produced by Z Dot and Crunchy right. so it's the same same producers so you know they've got the same sounds they're gonna always have like a similar sound and and you know I kind of, we kind of like went together and built this sound that could be the first sound of eyes so now like you know if, if you listen to my Square One project and you're a producer you could now make like one of those YouTube type eyes beats because now you know the type of sound of so that that's kind of what it's all about and that's what Square One is, man. It's a new version of Eyes that is um, 
an actual artist. So Z dot produced the whole project. Yeah, it's not the first time you guys have worked together, of course. No, we made another project together. How did as you well. meet? We actually met just online, you know, kind of weirdly. A lot of I said, "Who should I work with? Which producer?" And a lot of people said Z dot, and um, he hit me up and said, "Yo, let's work then, mate." And I was like, "Whoa, let's go and do that then, bro." Made a little song with him. These times, say I wasn't even actually that big to be fair, so not like I'm massive now to be fair. But you know, I got my name in the game, and at the time I didn't. So I met him at like an early stage in my career where I was just doing, you know, a couple freestyles and on on YouTube's, and it was it was it was it was building. He saw it building though. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, we we met online. I linked up, went to his studio, made like a banger. Went back every like over two weeks and then made uh, taking control. Um and ever since then, like we've always just had a crazy friendship in it. So like when I go in there, it's not like how it is with I don't know, sixty five percent of producers. It's more of like a what are you saying, fam? What have you been up to yeah, today? Yeah, what you, what you done? Yeah, like we'll talk about loads of things, you know. Like I know I go to his birthday parties up into his house, loads of different kind of things in it. So there's more than just like uh what we're gonna do. Like he knows my son, he knows me as a person, he knows my different kinda mood swings, he knows my different kind of like split personalities. He kind of lo- he knows me very well, you know what I'm saying? And the same, I know kind of how they sound. I know what said Dot's drum pattern's going to be like. I know like mm-hmm. the flows. It's not like it's always the same, but like, it's like, you know, it's he just a natural start. natural feeling and connection in it. So it's it's a sick relationship that I've got with Zed Dot and Crunchy as well, to be fair, because he's sick at making the mix downs and the keys. It's just crazy, man. Like, when all three of us are in there, there's like, you know, me and Zed are trying to like bump up that grind sound and then you just got Crunchy in the corner silent and adding a little bit more of a musical touch to it. So it's, it's amazing still, man. And them two are like brothers to me, man. So it's sick to be working with them still to this day and to be working with actual people that... Like I'm so happy to split money with and make more and more with. So yeah, you know yeah, yeah. that's I think that's a vital thing because some people <laughs> they work with people they don't really like or you know they they just go back like oh man I was doing my head in the jarring or mm-hmm. you know like I've never felt that way with them man. So you grew up singing in a choir, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what kind of gave you the confidence to be a bit more melodic on this project? Because I first noticed it in local area. Mm. I think it subconsciously did. You know, I think. That's kind of like where I kind of like thought, you know, or learned how to hit notes and, you know, what what, what not. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that's where it came from. Obviously, I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. I haven't done that for years, but there must be like something that like stuck in me from then mm-hmm. to like, you know, think singing is possible and, you know, try those kind of things. Because, I mean, it's not easy being a rapper and trying to sing, especially especially live. Especially yeah. live, especially it's madness, in grime yeah. as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. But um, I mean, there's a couple of things I learned. Yeah, especially in grime. But a couple of things I learned as like growing up in in the choir and kind of things that you know, like that I've learned and can add in my music now. Like harmonies, I didn't actually. I knew exactly what it was when I was young and learned what it was. I just didn't know the name of it. Right. So like. Once I learned what harmonies were, it was already normal to me because I was like, oh, that thing that I learned in choir time and time and time ago, maybe 20 years ago. But yeah, man. And it's, it's still followed down to now. So you are right. Yeah, that that's definitely is what kind of like made me be a bit more melodic, as you say. It's like you said, though, yeah. making music, making yeah. songs rather yeah. than just bars. A bit of a vibe, isn't it? Make people yeah, dance, man. you know. And, and, and I enjoy it, man. You get me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I spoke to a lot of boys on the show, right? Yeah. They're obviously from Birmingham, and what they said to me was about Birmingham that no one really in Birmingham backed them yeah. until they were getting a lot of shine from the capital, from London, yeah. Yeah. and until they were suddenly popping down here. Yeah, and then everyone in the hometown got on board and they become kings in their area. Yeah, for sure. Was it the same for you, or was it the opposite way around? Uh, I think for me it was a little bit more opposite. I think growing up when I was young, it was very hard to get on it because a lot of people were thinking, "Oh, this guy's got the stupid accent. He's trying to be with the Derby boys." Like, you know, most of the Derby guys didn't really rate that. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, it was hard to get a shine at then. But as soon as I actually put something out, like that was before I put anything out, it was just me asking with no backlog, no CV or nothing. Yeah. As soon as I actually made the video, everyone rated it. And that was before the Capital liked it. So I think for them, they did really sick to slap the Capital first because that made everything around it just go boof. Yeah, explode. you know, like 
oh, what, the capital was talking about you and you're there and we forgot we have to talk about you now. You know what I'm saying? Whereas mine was a bit more, yo, I got all the Derby people. Now we need to go to London. And that's what I did. I banged down the doors with like a thousand fans, but they were core fans, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If I say tweet, all thousand of them were tweeting, which, you know, most men didn't have. And, and it was only a thousand, but all thousand of them were so strong that it looked like I had so many more. Yeah. And I think mine was kind of different <laughs> to theirs as like I could go to certain place, people and companies and, you know, programs, channels and say, like, can I get involved, you know? And then there might be an air and then I'll say, listen, everyone, tweet them, let them know I need to get involved. Then they'll be back like, okay, well, well, well. Showing you got some pull, some power. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I think that's, that, exactly, exactly. Showing I got pulls. And um, yeah, so I've kind of like, still now, I'm still trying to build my London kind of buzz. I think, I think, to be honest, it's better to bust in London first, in my opinion, obviously, from just previous experience. But um, I'm happy the way I've done it, innit? Because it's kind of like, it's more of a journey. It's not like to disrespect anyone else, it's just for my own, innit? Just, it's more of a journey, so I know, like, I appreciate it more when I get to the end, you know what I mean? I appreciate, like, little parts, you know, like, certain people might get it so soon that they've gone from step five, one, one to five to ten, that they didn't really get to appreciate six, seven, eight, or yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas mine's like a slower step. And, it, you know, I kind of like, I hit hurdles and I'll, and I'll be happy that I've got to that part now. Now I'm on to the next one. Why is mm. Top Boy the next single from the project? I've, I, it's my favourite song on there, to be fair. That's, okay. That's for one reason. It's my favourite song. Two, I think it's stating something very important. I think a lot of people forget that, you know, I'm doing this from Derby and my buzz is no is not far off some of the big boys buzzes you know what I'm saying some mm-hmm. very big boy buzzes and like I know they notice it and I know they see it so I think it's just to release it and make them say okay you're not wrong you are you are amongst the top boys so I think that's that's why I'm releasing it now and it's coming up to summer as well so you know I want to kind of like scare people a little bit before summer like yeah, it's coming it's not <laughs> wake, wake some people wake up wake some boys up and you know make it a bit more fun again like oh as is coming like saying he's the top boy how can he say that you know so it's a bit more maybe open doors for people to try and mention my name or mm-hmm. you know yeah we might get a fuck the grime May, scene I part might, two I, they might hear it if if someone if someone eats the eats the yeah, cheese the that, bait, on the yes. string <laughs> you get me dead or alive mm. anyone ever who would you put on a track with eyes? Oh, I always change. I, I always change when people say this, you know. But my new one's Michael Jackson. I can't, ima- yeah. I can't imagine what that would sound like, to be honest. I can't imagine it. All I know is it would be mad. Cause yeah, numbers. I would be my, I'd do my rap thing. I think I'd get him on a bit more of a doesn't matter if you're black or white kind of vibe. And yeah. Do, 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 do. Ow! Then I'll come to you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's, not, it's not planned yet. Obviously, we'd have to sit down, innit? But we can't. You're gonna have, you're gonna have to do a studio session, mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dead or alive, not, yeah. We've got to go with MJ. MJ, yeah. It's not something <laughs> you can freestyle, man. That's a. Uh... No, no, it's not. It's not. I was about to try it, and it just went pear shit. So I won't do that ever. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um, I think you're proper nice with the punchlines, and yeah. I think at the moment, lyricism is very overlooked in in grime, but UK rap as well. But yeah. more specifically, I think a lot of people are overlooking proper lyricists in yeah, grime yeah definitely. have you got one bar that you've dropped that you were like oh that was so sick but people didn't pick up on it i've had a lot you know what it is i like i do weird things with words in it i used to like um proper like study weird things about words right this is really weird isn't it so like it's a couple that i've done yeah like all right say so no one really got this one yeah it's a bit violent though but it, it's, it's it was an old one it was about um it's something about if I bottle you, I'll make the beard drip. And if I pull your chin hair, I'll make the beard drip. So it was like beard drip, but it was like beard drip, beard, beard ripped. ripped. Yeah, it was like beard drip, beard ripped, beard ripped. Yeah, it was beard ripped, beard ripped. So it was really kind of weird, to be fair, but that isn't my best boss, so that just sounded real crap. And another one was, uh, can you leave eyes like the maker jeans was pretty one a lot of people didn't even realise, and I was surprised they didn't get it. But Say that again? Yeah. Why can't they leave eyes like the make of jeans? A lot of fakers hating me. Why can't they leave eyes like the make of jeans? Mm-hmm. You know when I explained that first bar, that was so whack. That's not how I even said it. Like I need to actually listen back to that myself, <laughs> innit? You know when it's so hard, even I got confused. <laughs> mad, mad. 
I yeah, think mad. looking at some of your performances, right? Because you've done a lot of like European performances. Yeah, recently I've done quite and a you, few, man. You've got a very big European fan base. Yeah. Do you think you're bigger in some of them countries than you are in the UK? I think I am bigger in a couple cities. I'm bigger than I am in London. Right. I think that to a country, whereas I don't think I'm bigger yet in another country than the UK. I think Australia is probably the closest. But um, yeah, I think Europe, like let's say for instance... Amsterdam, Rotterdam. When I do shows there, it's pretty packed out with uh, the um, Dutch crew. Mm -hmm. Dutch crew come through and always, always support. So I think the shows in the shows there are pr pretty more packed than the ones in London. But not like they're never packed in London. I've just never done a yeah, yeah, headline yeah. show. But Is it weird that you? can pack out venues in like Rotterdam, Amsterdam and... Yeah, it is Do you find weird. it strange? It's weird. And like yeah. even Australia, I know you've got a fan base, you've yeah, got a yeah, tour yeah. in Australia coming up, Yeah, right? exactly, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's crazy, man, because I don't understand how it got there before it got to London. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense, to be fair. How's of the internet, yeah. mate? Like, I went to some place called Estonia and it was literally, mm -hmm. I was the headline act, so why this would happen, I don't know, but it's 600 tickets and 600 sold, plus people getting turned on the door. So I'm thinking, they don't even speak English here, you know? And people were flying from Latvia. Wow. And this is like, that's like a country away. You know, yeah. it's like it's like flying from France to come watch someone in England because they're, they're not coming to France. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's like, why? Like, I know I could walk around the corner now and see one of the biggest UK rappers. And it's not it's not a problem. That's, that's sick. I'm happy about that. It's just but normal, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to look up. We're not going to be so, like starstruck obviously a lot of kids will be but i think over there it's like oh my days this guy is you know like they don't actually know the difference between who's top or who's not like mm -hmm. some guys over there for i was like one of the toppest guys in grime and it's there i'm saying no 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 they're like well look no, you should just take 600 it, people like, yeah here. it's like, standard like, they were looking around like this what? Is what you're on about because there's some people I'm saying that they didn't know. I'm not going to say names, but there's people that are big and a lot of them didn't even know. And it's like, mm -hmm. how don't you know him? You know, so it did bang into different kind of like cities and countries around Europe. And I'm grateful for that. But I do think it is bigger than London. London's probably the only city I can go into a chicken shop when there's school kids and not feel away. And I know they're not going to ask for a picture. They're not going to bother me because they don't know me. Mm -hmm. They're just going to that's it obviously there's one and two that will occasionally but I could never do that up north no way I could never do that in Brighton I could never do that in P Bournemouth I could never do that in Bristol you know and they're, they're still south so I don't know what it is that's got this little like thing of, like London but it's so big I think it's hard to like overtake isn't it? so like that's my next aim so I f it's good to have all the European stuff and it's amazing and I think that's the head that's the step after London to be fair yeah but you know, I think once you got London, you're, you're, you're done. Because you've got the whole city talking about it then. It's like, once London's talking about it, everyone's going to talk about it because it's a super elite city of the world that's in our country, mm -hmm. you know? And like especially in my city and even like Manchester, look how great Manchester is. You know, you still look up to London as if it's an elite city because it's the capital of a capital country you know it's insane and obviously like it's it's up there with your new york's your tokyo's I think they seem to be the top power, three though in it new york london tokyo yeah they yeah, yeah. seem to be the top ones when yeah, they definitely yeah yeah so what's next for you like do you have a plan for the rest of the year have you got more projects on the way or are you going to focus on getting square one out to the people and get it really like i am listening yeah you're right so I'm, I am focusing on Square One quite a lot, to be fair. But I am I am due to, to due to release another little project uh, just at the end of summer. I think I'm just going to make this one live through summer. Maybe do a couple collabs with some people. And um, I'm actually just going to start working on my album now, you know. I know it's very early. But um, I think, you know, I may as well just take the opportunity while I feel like there's a buzz generating and actually make the most of the time, you know. And... I think all this collab kind of wise I've not really made any big songs with any people so if I make an album and now it's got the big collabs it's like wow yeah instead of me just making big collabs I think now's the time I've got big artists ready to collab and they're down to they're down to like work and be on my projects I think I should use that to my advantage and you know make a project with it and actually make something that will 
get my foot in the door and maybe even last a bit longer than just an average mixtape, which not square one isn't an average mixtape, but you know, it's easy to be seen as an average mixtape because of the end of the name mixtape, you know. And um when you say album, people just look at it like raw. So I think what I've got in my head of what I've got, uh, it's album material, man. So I'm just gonna go for that and um just release a little EP. And yeah, man, start going down the garagey kind of flicks and gram. Still gram, obviously, but kind of like party gram. So that kind of like leads it to garage anyway. So yeah, it's going to be down that we kind do of We do still want some of that more body, more, more body bag grind from you, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no don't get some more people up. Don't get, get ever get it alive. twisted. Don't ever get it twisted. Man's there, innit? You know what time it is, yeah? I get them yeah. wobbly beats and I'm coming through grime. I'll never stop doing grime. I'll always do grime. Um, it's my main thing. So I'll, when I'm saying I'll do the garage, you kind of... That's what I'll be doing releasing wise, but no doubt you'll still see me skating down a beat. You'll still see me at grime sets. You'll still see me doing my thing and helping out the youngest from my area that do do grime and other genres, you know. But um, maybe a bit more <clears throat> party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we definitely yeah. need a fuck the grime scene part two out here. Uh, we need to wake some people up. Yeah, man, I'm ready. So when Top Boy comes out, if anyone's got a problem with me being the Top Boy. Just come at Say me, innit? Come bro. at me, boy. Oh, you know what you want to do? Put the instrumental for Top Boy out. Oh, Let him try a thing. I should still. Let him try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should say Top Boy Challenge. Same for me. Yeah. Something like Top that. Boy Challenge. What Top Boy got? Challenge. And then yeah. that's it. Fuck the grime scene part two comes. Bang! Top Boy Challenge. Line them up. Yeah. Do you reckon Top Boy Challenge will bang? I think, bro, the beat's hard. Yeah, say no more then. That's it. Yeah, there you go then. There you go. There you go. Bro, we're I top think we're about to way. start something, man. Yeah, yeah just me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I imagine. Bro, thanks for <laughs> thanks for passing through, man. No, it's been you sick. For me. Looking forward to uh, listening to the album, man. So when it's when it's dropping, yeah, let's man. get you back in. Let's break the album down. Definitely, man. Thanks for having me. Sorry Bro. to keep over talking when you're talking. S- sorry sorry it, to be waffling on and doing it just again. Then waffling is what interviews are <laughs> for, mate. That's why we're here. All right. It's DJ Double here with Ice. Come on. Big up DJ Double. Long time bridging, yeah. Myself, Ice. Bokai.